So we will now begin. So I'm handing over to you, Rosella. Thanks, Georg, and welcome, everybody. Um, handily, my PowerPoint presentation has decided to die, so I'm hoping I will be able to share my screen. So before I introduce um, the pilots and what we want to do, I thought as I began writing what I wanted to say today, I started to reflect around not upon just what we've done in the last few years with the Alliance products, um, with the Alliance project, sorry, but the profound importance that the energy industry has on the world today and why proactive projects such as this matter. There is no doubt that the utility industry is one of the most critical industries in our society, but the energy market does need to change. With the clean energy package, the European Union aims to transform its energy systems towards cleaner and more sustainable energy. To do this, we need to reduce emissions. And there is a lot of hard work to come, particularly if we are to achieve these aims without significant increases in energy prices for our consumers. Data and technology can pave the way for the integration of more renewables and new technologies into the electricity system. Therefore, if we are to achieve a reduction in emissions at scale, the, the EU, um, the EU uh, system operators and data providers need to embark on rapid development of our data landscape. As Georg outlined, the, the Alliance aims to establish standards on how to, how to obtain data and send markets across, across in a secure way across the EU states to address this challenge collectively. Some data hubs and system operators have already embraced this challenge, but many have not. So it's incredibly important that we not only understand the challenge, but also work together to establish the ways to achieve it, because whether we like it or not, change is coming. One of the key questions we have faced is around what type of future we're looking to, to achieve. Many of the current innovators do not have access to data within their, within their own country, let alone within market states. So therefore the need for cross EU data share initiative may not be so immediate to them. So I think it's important to note that whilst the Alliance is looking to share data via the pilots, the EU Alliance is also looking over the last few years to sharing best practice and creating a view of what data is available to who and how we get to share that data. One of the key, key areas we're doing that is around sharing best practice and one of the, the, that's one of the reasons why I'm here today. Electrolink is um, the data hub provider for the GB energy market and we have been um, focusing on the same aims as the Alliance have been for many years. Electrolink has been proactively developing its business and focusing on data and is establishing data sharing to support the EU um, initiatives around improving data access to support the, the green, green energy transition. This timeline was created to help highlight Electric's history, but don't worry, I don't expect you to read any of it. Um, but to summarise our history with data, Electric was established in 1998 to allow energy market participants to share data to support the privatisation of the energy market. And we were initially only, like many of the data hubs on this call today, only really required to transfer data. So basically enabling market participants to share data from one party to another. But we noticed with the support of our industry participants that there is a need to share data much wider than what is required from a regulatory perspective. So since 2012, we've been able to collect the data from the energy industry from what they send across our data hub and share this data with innovators and existing market participants to help the transformation in the energy market. This capability has enabled us to work with key market participants such as National Grid um, to support their transforming role in the energy market and develop products with the system operators and external parties such as electric vehicle providers or solar panel installations to utilize things like low carbon and um, artificial intelligence to identify low carbon technologies. And this is um, one of the things that's one of the key outputs that this has enabled us to do is to bring together effectively an innovation platform that supports the developing services of existing market participants, but also to enable innovators and people outside of the usual scope of energy market participants to access data, provided that they have the right governance requirements, whether it's GDPR or customer consent. And you may be thinking if 
Electrolink is already able to share data with innovators, why do we need the alliance? And put simply, the reason we need the alliance is because we cannot tackle the challenge of climate change alone. We are all facing the same issues. Um, we, are, we, are all, we all understand here on this call that this is going to have an incredible impact on our, on our energy system. And without the support of each other and without addressing this consistently, we won't be able to address this challenge. As many of you know, one, one of the key targets within the clean energy package is to increase the number of electric vehicles on, on our roads by 30 million and by 2030. And also alongside that, increase the number of renewable energy generation by 30, to 32%. And whilst this is an incredible feat, and this is exactly where we need to go, it does present challenges. A million, millions of new solar panels, electric vehicles, wind farms connecting to our grids is adding a new destabilizing element to our relatively stable one-way distribution network. And one of the challenges the growth of these technologies presents is towards our system operators, and I believe many of which are on the call today. And what one of the challenges that presents to these system operators is managing peak and peak load and total demand. And Whilst I'm sure all of, all of those uh, system operators will tell us that demand and low patterns always change, the variability and unpredictability of low carbon technologies are presenting new challenges to system operators. But under these system circumstances, shifting circumstances, sorry, system operators still have the responsibility to manage the grid. Traditionally, they would rely on network reinforcement. However, this becomes increasingly unmanageable in a more decentralized volatile network. And so whilst technology is driving the change, the core of this transition is data, both in the provision of data to the system operators and the provision of data access to market actors. And this requires data sharing platforms. First of all, the DSOs need to gather data to understand the problem. They need to understand what assets are on their grid, whether it's an electric vehicle, a solar panel, a customer. And this has motivated the development of multiple projects to establish data sharing and open data platforms operated by DSOs across the world. The reason why they need to do this is understanding your assets enables system operators to plan daily operations, but also understand whether there is a potential need for smart solutions to avoid network reinforcement in the face of these growing constraints. But once the DSO is, is aware of who or what is active in their network, the DSO may need to utilise these smart controls. And this is only achieved by supporting new market participants to understand and integrate into their marketplace. Now, the EU Alliance is not aiming to create a data platform for each member state. This will be the requirement of each DSO. But rather, the establishment of the Alliance is looking to go beyond simply improving the availability of data to DSOs, but to standardise how this data access is achieved to support the integration of new business models and new market participants into markets. And this is incredibly key because the question many, many DSOs should and probably are asking is, this could just seem like an additional regulatory burden. So why should DSOs look to coordinate data access efforts? And um, the simple answer is it yields better results. Projects such as the SmartNet project found that in all cases, decentralization of approach yielded the least efficient results. Utilizing a common model and a standard data exchange model reduces the development effort for innovators and minimizes conversion errors when receiving and translating data. The and they, they tested different types of trial methods and the implementation of trials which didn't have a joint approach achieved lower successes against cost, efficiencies and the support of DSO constraint requirements. So put simply, standardisation of access to data allows companies to develop digital tools applicable to the whole of the European market rather than, rather than specialised or tailored to one member state. Standardising our approach to data management will improve access to our marketplaces from external in innovators, which in turn will accelerate innovation and unlock benefits due to faster and easy implementation of new business models across the EU. Studies supported by Ellerin found that the digitalisation benefits could yield over 1 billion euros in benefits to, to the market by due to better management of consumer consumption, grid losses and constraints. And 
this is not going to be a small feat. It is a big piece of work to achieve, which is why, and there are clearly numerous work packages that need to be implemented to do so. And we are very fortunate that we have the support of seven DS, I think it's nine DSIs even, <laughs> to obtain a letter of intent to highlight their commitment to, to meeting this challenge. And the pilots were our key step in this process. The work of the pilots was to understand what value could the industry achieve with sharing access to data and agreeing common standards. It would have been really easy for us to agree the standards first and all our data providers sit in a room and create these standards. But I'm pretty sure we'd all agree that this probably would have taken a lot of time and may not have yielded the best results. So instead, we went to the industry, gave 10 innovators access to mock data to see what they could create simply with access to data. The aim of the, of the pilots were to demonstrate real business cases to bring to light the pain in the energy market with uneven and unsecure access to data and confirm the relevance of the establishment of these, these um, standards. As I hope you'll take away from today, this has ensured that we can find out what the real blockers are, what is stopping them from creating innovation, and this will enable us as data hub and system operators to deal with the key barriers to address the energy market challenges of today. But thank you very much for your time today. I think that's probably a good point for me to hand over to Kaya, who will take you through the pilots and how they um, fit into the wider project. Thank you so much, Rosella. So wonderful introduction of the background and also of the work in the UK. The United Kingdom has been uh, leading Europe in several energy market developments, and it's great to see what you're doing in the data area. And I hope to continue working with you as a EU uh, no new country anymore. We are. Yeah. I don't think that that doesn't prevent us from working together. So looking forward to that.